What if I told you there was once a grain so powerful it fed millions of people for free? A grain so rich in protein, minerals, and resilience that entire civilizations built their strength upon it. A grain that grew without irrigation, thrived in poor soil, resisted drought, and regenerated itself year after year. A grain so sacred, so central to life, that it appeared in ceremonies, in medicine, in offerings, in the very heartbeat of an empire. And what if I told you this grain was not lost? It was erased, deliberately, violently, systematically. Because a food that grows freely, a food that empowers people, a food that requires no overseer, no tax, no dependency, is a threat to any system built on control. This is the story of amaranth, the grain that nourished an empire, the grain that terrified colonizers, the grain that survived four centuries of suppression, and the grain now rising again as one of the most nutritious foods on earth. Long before the modern world began counting calories or measuring protein, the Aztec Empire understood the true meaning of nourishment. Amaranth was not just food, it was life. It grew across mountains, valleys, and high plains. Farmers harvested its seeds, leaves, and flowers. Mothers gave it to children for strength. Warriors carried cakes of amaranth into battle because they believed, rightly, that it made the body endure more than any other grain. Nearly one-fifth of all cultivated land was dedicated to amaranth at the height of the empire. It was eaten daily, celebrated yearly, and woven into religious ceremonies that bound communities together. In the great celebrations of Huitzilopochtli, the sun and war deity, priests formed statues of the god using amaranth dough and honey. After the rituals, the people ate the statue together, not as superstition, but as communion with life itself. Amaranth was nutrition, identity, resistance, and cosmic balance wrapped into a single golden seed. It was also, without question, one of the most remarkable crops ever domesticated. Unlike corn, it needed no coaxing. Unlike wheat, it was not vulnerable to drought. Unlike barley, it grew in thin, rocky soil. Unlike rice, it did not thirst. Its leaves carried more minerals than spinach. Its seeds contained complete protein, all nine essential amino acids. Its deep roots stabilized the soil. Its flowers dropped tens of thousands of seeds, restoring fertility each season. It was abundant. It was dependable. It was unstoppable. And that, historians now admit, is precisely why the Spanish Empire feared it. When conquistadors marched into the Valley of Mexico in the early 1500s, they encountered an empire sustained by crops that needed neither European seeds nor European techniques. Corn, beans, squash, chia, cactus fruit, and above all, amaranth, fed millions without dependence on foreign rule. A self-sufficient population is a dangerous population to colonizers. The Spanish recognized something profound. If the Aztecs continued to cultivate amaranth, they would continue to resist. Amaranth was not just food, it was a symbol of unity, ceremony, strength, and identity. To break a people, you must break their food. And so began one of the most systematic agricultural erasures in global history. The Spanish crown declared amaranth illegal. Fields were burned. Seeds were confiscated. Farmers caught cultivating it were punished, sometimes with the loss of a hand, sometimes with death. Priests banned it from ceremonies. European grains replaced it on pain of violence. A crop that had fed millions for free suddenly became contraband. And within a single generation, amaranth, the sacred grain of the Aztecs, nearly vanished from the valleys where it had grown for thousands of years. But here is where the story changes. Because amaranth did not die, it retreated into the mountains into the hands of indigenous families who refused to forget, into hidden terraces far from colonial roads, 
into tiny plots where seeds were saved secretly, passed down quietly, guarded carefully across centuries. Amaranth survived not because systems protected it, but because people who remembered its power refused to let it go. For 400 years, Amaranth lived underground, a grain exiled in its own homeland. Meanwhile, the modern world built entire industries around food that required fertilizer, machinery, irrigation, pesticides, and annual seed purchases. But Amaranth needed none of those things. It was too independent for modern agriculture, too nutritious to ignore, too resilient to control. Even when botanists rediscovered it in the 1970s, they hardly understood what they had found. A crop that grows in drought, a crop with more protein than wheat, a crop with more calcium than milk, a crop that thrives in poor soil and survives intense heat? It seemed impossible, except it had already sustained millions for centuries. As scientists studied it, they confirmed what indigenous farmers always knew. Amaranth protects the body in ways few modern foods can. Its lysine content supports muscle repair. Its antioxidants fight inflammation. Its fibers stabilize blood sugar. Its minerals strengthen the immune system. Its proteins resemble those of animal foods. Its leaves rival kale in micronutrient density. It is a food so complete, some nutritionists call it a plant-based equivalent of eggs. But perhaps its greatest strength is ancestral, resilience. Amaranth grows where other crops fail. It flourishes in drought, in heat, in sandy soil, in marginal land. It withstands climate extremes that threaten global agriculture. It needs almost no water. It regenerates itself year after year, naturalizing landscapes without exhausting them. It is a crop designed for the future, precisely because it was shaped by the past. Yet modern agricultural systems still resist it. Not because it is weak, but because it does not fit the architecture of control. You cannot own a plant that grows itself. You cannot build an empire on a grain that asks for nothing. You cannot structure profit around a crop that does not require a yearly purchase. And so Amaranth, even in the 21st century, remains largely invisible to the mainstream. But invisibility is not the same as absence. Across Mexico, Guatemala, Peru, and the American Southwest, communities are reviving amaranth not as a trend, but as a reclamation. Women's cooperatives cultivate it to rebuild nutrition in regions facing food insecurity. Farmers plant it in dry zones where corn no longer thrives. Healers incorporate its leaves and seeds into remedies for inflammation, blood sugar imbalance, and immune weakness. In Mexico, the little seed cakes known as alegrías, once outlawed, are sold in markets again, a quiet defiance woven into a simple, joyful food. In Kenya and India, amaranth leaves nourish families during droughts. In Nepal and Bhutan, amaranth is a mountain staple once more. In the United States, regenerative farmers experiment with it as a climate-proof crop. Everywhere it returns, it returns differently, but always with the same message. You cannot kill a plant that belongs to the people. Amaranth's story is not just about nutrition. It is about identity, about the power of food to shape culture, about the attempts to erase that culture through control, suppression, and replacement. And it is about how memory survives even when history is rewritten. The Spanish Empire tried to erase Amaranth because they understood its true power, autonomy. A community that feeds itself cannot be controlled. A body strengthened by its land cannot be conquered easily. A culture rooted in its ceremonies cannot be dissolved. But Amaranth remembered what the world forgot. It remembered how to live in heat, how to thrive without irrigation, how to regenerate without permission, how to nourish the human body completely, how to serve both ritual and survival. It fed millions for free, and that is why it was erased from history. Not because it was unimportant, but because it was essential. Not because it was weak, but because it was strong. Not because it was dangerous, 
but because it was liberating. Today, as the climate changes, as diseases linked to poor diet rise, as soil fertility collapses, as global food systems grow fragile, Amaranth offers something we desperately need, a blueprint for resilience. A food that asks for nothing, gives everything, and grows in the places the modern world overlooks. Amaranth stands now where it always stood, at the threshold between loss and memory, between destruction and regeneration, between forgetting and rediscovery. It is not waiting to be found, it is waiting to be recognized. The grain that fed millions is still here, still sacred, still sovereign, still alive. It survived empire, it survived erasure, it survived centuries beneath the surface of history. And now, the world is finally ready to remember what Amaranth never forgot.